If you had the chance to ask Gary Vee one question, what would you ask him? Not many people have access to Gary Vee to ask a question, right? So I did the next best thing. What would Gary Vee say were the top five books that changed his life when it comes to doing things efficiently? And here are the answers that ChatGPT gave me. These might not be exactly the books that Gary Vee would recommend. And I've heard in many interviews he gave, he's not much of a reader. I just don't read books. Whoa. So this is very subjective. Gary Vee's ideas coming from AI. This is gonna be interesting. Here we go. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Well, the first book that came on that list was Atomic Habits by James Clear. He's been studying this thing for a long time. The book is amazing. It's not a big book though. You can read in, I don't know, maybe three weeks, four weeks, if you read slowly, just a little bit every day. And there are two things that I wanted to make sure you understand that these could be the reasons why you read that book and why you adopt the ideas from the book. Number one, the power of compound interest. You do a little bit today and that will pay out much later. You start a habit now and it might just be a 1% change, 2% change, but in the future that will turn into a big thing. You know, you don't go to the gym today and you become muscular tomorrow. You go to the gym today and tomorrow and next week and next month and for a few years, and you become healthy, you become muscular, you become big, whatever it is your goal. So the power of compound interest, you do a little bit and you improve a little bit every day until you get to the point you desire. That's compound interest. And the other thing that he is very big on the book is the power of systems, systems. Don't dwell in your willpower to do things, create systems that will support you. Here's a memorable quote about that book that I love that quote. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. We grew up in a culture where we learn to set goals. How about we learn to create systems that will support us to achieve those goals? It makes a big difference, a big difference. I'll give you a very silly example, very exaggerated example of a system, not a goal. You wanna cut sugar. Instead of just dwelling in your willpower to fight against the will to buy biscuits and sugary stuff when you go to supermarket, and if you have them at home, same thing. Maybe you already have some packs of sugary things at home that you wanna get rid of, but you don't have enough willpower. What do you do? When you feel really strong, you hide them in the hardest place for you to get it in your house. Maybe the top shelf on the cabinet in the kitchen. What is that gonna do? When you look and you see that maybe a fruit is easy access and the sugary stuff is so hard to get, you're gonna go for the healthy things. The goal is to cut sugar. The system is to create routes to make easier for you to get, get your hands on healthy stuff and get your mind off the sugary and the bad stuff. This is just one of a thousand examples I could give you. The next book that comes on the list is Deep Work by Cal Newport. The reason why I love this book, and I'm pretty sure Gary Vee would say the same, is that the ability to do rare things is becoming increasingly rare in our culture. And at the same time, it is becoming extremely valuable. Why? Because we get distracted. We live in a culture where everything is a distraction. I'm sitting here in the studio, for example, and I'm doing two things that Cal Newport recommends. Batching and no distractions. I sit here in the studio every Wednesday from 10 o'clock to two o'clock. And then I record as many videos as I can. I record all of the videos for the next month. I sit here, I've got my scripts down. It's all, it's in a, I do it in a batch. Why? Because first, it gets my mind on the rhythm. It's easier to come here and do four videos than come here every week to do one video. And if that goes wrong, you have no plan B. Batching work and at the same time, no distraction. I can produce much more in four hours of focused work than eight hours of distracted work. It's easier to do work that is meaningful when you're focused. So Cal Newport, deep work. It's an extremely good book you should read. The third book on the list, oh my, oh my, I love this book. I feel like I wrote this book. I've, you know, this book has a lot to do with my culture of life, my way of living. The book is called Essentialism by Greg McKeon. I like to summarize this book by Greg McKeon with one sentence, focus the ability to say no to good opportunities in order to say yes to the best opportunities. I learned that with basketball, actually. With basketball, we've got 24 seconds on the clock to make your shot. And we sometimes, good teams will pass the ball up until the limit of 24 seconds first, 
to make sure that they control the pace of the game, and second, to make sure that they're giving up good shots all over the court to get the best shot available. That's focus, the ability to say no to good opportunities, they're good, in order to say yes to the best opportunities. <laughs> He's got many quotes and many memorable sentences that you can memorize in the book, but one that I love the most is this, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. <laughs> they will prioritize it with work, with tasks, with obligations, with bills, with a lot of things. Take control of your life. I know reading is hard, especially these days, so don't be dismayed. Watch this video all the way to the end because I've got some surprising tips at the end. All right, let's go. Now, let me take a break here for 15 seconds just to tell you something really, really important. If you're finding value in the videos that you're watching and in this video particularly, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. That'll help us and that'll help the algorithm on YouTube to spread this video to more people like yourself, smart people, intelligent people who actually want to grow in their lives. Okay, let's go back to the content. So I got two more books to recommend to you and surprising tips at the end of the video. So do not disconnect. Let's go. Fourth book on our list, The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. Do I need to say anything about this book? This is the father of all books when it comes to habits, right? If you haven't read The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg, you should read The Power of Habits. There's a lot in the atomic habits that you could see that was just expand, an expanded version of Charles Duhigg's book the power of habits. The book is about how organizations and businesses and even people like yourself and like myself can develop habits and these habits become a winning culture. I love when the books have some sort of alignment with sports and with basketball in particular. There's a quote in the book that Charles Duhigg says, great teams, they don't do extraordinary things. They do very ordinary things in a much better and faster manner so the other teams cannot catch up. It's the same with basketball. You know, you could have the best player, the best dunker, the best three-point shooter and put them all together and it still might not work. We've seen it. And if you follow the NBA, you've seen it recently, how many teams have put superstars together and that didn't work. Why? Because it is the power of system. I remember the Bulls in the 90s with the triangle. I remember the Lakers with Kobe and, and Shaq. Golden State Warriors with the fast-paced game that changed the face of the game recently with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson just shooting threes through the roof. Systems. Great teams, they don't do extraordinary things. They do ordinary things much faster and better than the other teams so they can't catch up. That's the secret. And the last book on the list, last but not least, Getting Things Done by David Allen. I'm pretty sure the whole GTV system, Get Things Done, came from ideas of this book, David Allen. It's amazing. You know how, how you have your phone on the test list that a lot of people just use for shopping lists? There is so much more you could do with it. And there's so many other systems, so many other apps. And in the book, he just explains and teaches you how to use that system to your advantage and the reason why he's so big on tasks like to-do lists and all of that because according to him ideas belong on the paper or in our days <laughs> on the phone because your mind is for having ideas not for holding ideas you will forget they'll go on the back of your mind so put it on paper plan it do to-do lists and all of that learn how to use it this is an amazing book if you want to get more efficient when it comes to tasks specifically i would say small tasks you know how i do it i've got my calendar with the big things and i i fit in i already explained to you guys many times here in this channel and then i have my to-do lists i have five or six to-do lists a shopping list a working to-do list people that I want to catch up with, all of that. And then every day, at the end of the day, I look at the list and I go, mm, this happened, this didn't happen, this happened, this didn't happen. And then I just move on to the next day. You do not rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your system. You create systems. Like I've got two or three big goals that I want to accomplish in the year. And I've got three, four or five things that I want to do every day. And these everyday steps, they are just little steps towards the big goal that I want to achieve at the end of the year. For that to happen, I need a system. Like I promised you, I've got a few surprising tips for you to conclude this video. Number one, learn to prioritize your life. The big old concept of the big rocks first. You remember that, Stephen Covey explaining that? You can look it up. He will put a jar and you know, you can put the big rocks first and then the small ones will fit in. But if you put all the small rocks first, the big ones will not fit in. Big rocks first. 
Number two, create systems that will support your goals. It's about systems. I cannot stress this enough. It's about systems, not goals. You can have a hundred goals. If you have no systems, you reach none of them. You might reach one or two by accident, but you reach none of them. You need a system. Part of your system is learning how to do things in batches, compound interest. So put it all together. If you have the privilege to work in a similar industry that I do, you can record a lot of videos, you can do a lot of things. Just put the similar tasks that you have all in one bucket and do them all. You can use other systems like attack the big giant tasks that you have during the day first. As soon as you wake up, you're full of energy. It doesn't work for me that way. You have to find your system. A good tip to find your system is looking up your circadian rhythm when you're active, when you're lethargic. All of that takes place. Tip number four, limit your exposure to social media. <laughs> You're probably watching this on YouTube or any other platform. Uh, you might have seen the clip on Instagram or YouTube shorts, and I'm, I'm big on social media. I do a lot of things on social media, but you have to learn to use social media for your benefit, not for your detriment, for your benefit. You have to learn how to use that for learning. Le use social media for learning it's a powerful tool. I can't say it enough. I see young people just scrolling through it aimlessly. Use it for your benefit but limit your exposure the longer you spend in front of the screen the harder it's going to be for you to focus if you limit your exposure to social media you will automatically increase your ability to focus hey i hope you're enjoying this content i love producing videos like this because it's just what i consume so if you have found value and if you'd like to know more about what we do exclusive content we've got podcasts we've got books we've got merchandise and all of that you can join that community and support what we do on patreon so you just go on patreon.com slash my name the link is right here and you will find everything that we do there and it's much richer than just the videos that you see here i would say if you really find value in the things that, that we do it'll be a good idea to support the creators that you follow starting with this one over here <laughs> okay all right let's go back to the video tip number five forget the old school eight hours of work is just not productive and i know you might not be able to have breaks in between but if you can if it is possible for you do like two three hours of work take a break another two three hours of work take a break it is much better and every break will recharge you so you can have a new flow a new rhythm a new speed and your mind is just refreshed it's amazing now if i had to recommend any of these books for you to start with deep work by Carl newport it's a really good book focus it's becoming extremely rare or atomic habits by james clear which is again if you want to get things done and improve in your life this is an amazing book to start with now here's an extra tip and this is the last thing i'm gonna say in the day and age that we're living in a lot of people have a hard time reading it's super hard to read it's hard to focus uh, we are used to things being very fast on the on, on youtube or we just put it on twice as fast or 1.5 and then we just listen to things in a hurry in the car i know a lot of people listen to books here's a valuable tip for you on youtube there's a lot of channels that summarize books another way to learn from the books is to learn from the author you can you can watch interviews you can watch the ted talks you can watch um, the author talking about the book which they generally do. You can follow the author on social media. So my social media, for example, is full of people that I admire. I might not be necessarily friends with them, but I admire them and I watch what they're doing. So you don't have to necessarily read the books. I would recommend that you continue to insist on reading. And if that's something you really want to go down that route, I would recommend you buy a Kindle. You know, you, you can find the link in the description here so you can you can get a, a Kindle on Amazon and when you click that, you help us supporting our thing with an affiliate link. But get a Kindle. A Kindle is an amazing thing. It helps you to read and the books are cheaper or you can subscribe to Amazon and um, subscribing to Amazon, you get Audible. So you can listen to uh, audio books or you can go on YouTube and just hassle, hassle your way around and find the content that you want to listen to or you want to watch to and create lists so you can learn. You see? It's not necessarily about reading this much, but it's about absorbing that content. If you can absorb that content, you will grow, you will develop, you will get things in a better way. That was it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video.
Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran sitting on, man, I still go, go.